Welcome to App Design Tips. Perhaps the feature that I'm most excited about for this release of Adobe XD is the libraries and components. Now I have another video highlighting every single feature for this latest release and there's a lot of them. They're really powerful. But to illustrate the power of libraries and components, we're going to create a buttons library that you can reuse throughout many projects. Now if you're the type that likes to skip videos and just grab the goodies, then I have a link in the description below with this project that you can just grab and use it throughout your projects. So let's get started in here. So first we're starting this project with just a few colors. We have the default color, we have success, info, warning, and danger. We have a few icons here and then we have some shapes just for our button. And I want to talk about what I'm doing here in this button real quick. So I have just this button background and then I actually have a state, a pressed state. And this is just basically a black layer with 20% opacity just to show what it would look like if you press down on a button. Real quick guys, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. And this layer is inactive. So it's a white layer with a 60% opacity and basically it's what it's going to look like if that button can't be pressed. So those are the few layers that we need to create these components. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is just move these out of the way just real quick, just these two layers here. And now we can see just this button. And then I want to come into my assets panel here and we can see that we don't have any assets here yet. So let's just click on each color and let's add these colors. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we want to name these colors appropriately. So I'm going to name this one default and we can name this one success information warning and danger. Okay. And you can also see if I jump back into the layers panel that I have these layers named icon upload exit search and error. It just helps things to be a little bit better discoverable through the layers panel. So I just make sure and name those correctly. And then here I have the button background. And then here with the buttons, I actually want to apply this color style to start off with. So I'm going to come over here and just apply this default color style. And then here I can try to apply that style, but it's not going to work. It created a new field, but that can't be seen anyways. So I want to right click and apply this as a border. And then with this text, I want to apply that color as well. And this button's looking good. And now for each one of these guys, I want to apply this blue color to them as well. Okay, so that looks good. And then we can move these shapes back over. And we're going to hide this by default, but I'm going to show you kind of how this works when we create our first component. So let's select all of these. Let's just center this and center this just so we know that we have everything centered the way we want. And let's create our first button. We're selecting all of these layers and we're going to just going to click this components button and we'll call this button primary. And now that we've done that, we can see this little diamond shape is showing this. This is the master component. So if we copy this button over here and we make any changes to this one, it's going to change any of the children. So I'm going to jump back into my layers here. For the master component, <clears throat> I want this inactive state and the press state to be disabled. So this will be my default button. But here, if I want to show what it looks like to be inactive, I can select these layers and turn that on. So that's inactive and this is pressed. So we can see that very clearly here. And I'm going to create a new button here. And let's jump back into our assets panel and click on this plus and we'll call this button secondary. And again, let's hide these layers here. So I'm going to hide inactive and I'll hide pressed. And that's going to be our default button. Let's just delete this one for now. And we have our two buttons here. And now if we ever want to use these buttons, we can come over here to the components. We can drag them in and we can change the colors of this button now. So if we select this shape here, we can make this a danger button warning. We can change those colors very easily here. And it doesn't matter how many buttons you create. If I want to copy this a few times, I can jump in here to edit this danger color. I can make it more red if I want, black. You can change that around. It's going to change everything that has that style applied. So let's undo that. I think I like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this for now. And now we want some buttons with these icons incorporated. So 
I'm going to come down here and just copy this button down holding down Option or Alt. Do the same thing down here. And I actually want to grab both of these and before I break a link to this symbol, I want to show you how powerful symbols are. So you can override anything you want with this child component. And forgive me if I keep saying symbols, that's what it used to be called in Adobe XT. They just renamed it to components. So symbols and components are the same thing. Components are just much more powerful. So components here, I can move this around without affecting the master component. So I could even add a new layer on top of here. So if I want to copy this and just double click inside of this component and paste it inside, it's actually a part of that component now and it's its own instance. So let's make sure I might not have done that correctly. So I'm going to select this, double click inside of here, make sure it's pasted into this group. And now, even though this is a child component, I have a layer in here that doesn't exist in the master component, but it still works. I'm going to delete that straggler here. And so you could do it that way, but we actually want this version of a button to be smart as well. So I'm going to undo that a few times and let's redo that here. And now that we have this set up, let's just select both of these and we'll click ungroup components. So now these are basic shapes again. And I actually made a mistake. I'm going to undo that real quick. The mistake I made was I need to come back into the layers before I ungroup this. Then I want the inactive and active state just for these buttons. So I'm going to unhide them and then I'll select them and ungroup the components. So now we have all of these components and I'm just going to drag these over here to the side just for now. And let's create a button state with icons. So here, this is centered. I want this to be left aligned and I want it to sit over here. Let's say 20 pixels here from the edge. Same thing over here. I'll have this one sit 20 pixels from the edge. And I want to drag, it doesn't matter which one actually. So I'll just drag this upload one. And before I drag it even, I actually have to come over here to the assets panel and just create some new components. So icon upload, search, info, exit, and error. And now I can even I can come over here and drag them, but I can just hold down option and grab this so that it's a child instance. And first, let's bring these over here. So I want this one again. Oops, I'm doing it on the wrong button here. It needs to be over here. So I actually want 20 pixels to be over here as well. So I'm going to just bring this to the edge here and then one, two. So that'll be 20 pixels. And then I'll drag it over here to be 20 pixels as well. And these buttons are an odd number. So I'm just going to make them 170 just so they're even. And that way I can make this exactly 20 pixels here from the edges. And we have that button. And I want to just make this one white. We want that button to be white here so we can see it. And we have that set up now. So left aligned. And I'm not pinning anything yet. I want to show you how awesome responsive resize is when we get this set up the right way. So I'm just going to resize my shapes here to match. Same thing here, my press states and my inactive states. And I also want this layer to be below the same layer. I want it to be on the same layer as this button state here. So I can come into my layers panel. I have my button layer right here and then I have the icon layer up here. I want to just bring that down so that the disabled can be over that. So we'll do that. Okay, so we have these set up. We've got these two components already created. We're going to come back into the assets panel and we're going to create this new component. We're going to name this button icon primary and we'll name this one button icon secondary. So again, now that we have this created, I'm going to jump back into my layers. I'm going to just turn these off by default. Those are just to show those states. For the most part, we want the buttons to look like this. And now the really exciting thing when we bring this over, we can resize this and it already set the constraints automatically with responsive resize, automatic resizing. So if I type in a really long button, then I can easily just resize this to fit and it looks good. If it's just a 
small button. Just resize that and everything looks good. And if you ever jump into the master component, you can move things around and it's gonna move everywhere else. Or let's say that you want just this instance right here. You want this icon to be on the left, but you don't wanna affect all the other components. You can easily do that by just grabbing this over here, just scooting this to the left, scooting this to the right. Now, when I do that and I try to resize, it's looking weird. So I can reset these constraints in here, even though it did it automatically. I'm gonna switch this one to the left. Let's switch this one to the right and we're fixing the width and height. And now this child component, only this component is gonna have that magic applied and all the other components here. If I copy this again, it's going to adopt what the master component has unless you override that. And the really nice thing about overriding too is you can actually override new layers. So if I wanna create a new rectangle inside here, just for demo purposes, I'm gonna show you, we can create this. In fact, let's just add a new color inside of here. So you can do that. And this is just a child instance. So I can still come in here and move this around and it adopts everything else except for that one layer override. And that has been the struggle with most design tools. When you create these components and then you wanna branch off and see if something looks good or explore some creativity, you always have to ungroup that component and you lose a lot of that functionality that you created that component for in the first place. Here, you can keep that same component. You can do just about anything you want. And if you ever don't like it, you can right click and reset this to the master component. So we're gonna reset this here and just a lot of flexibility. You don't have to worry about creating components and later breaking them just to explore new ideas. Now I'm gonna delete these ones and let's say these buttons, these secondary ones, you want a new style applied, maybe this secondary one right here. And let's just select this shape right here with this border. And I want the secondary color to be the success color. So I can come over here and apply this as a border. And same thing with this text, I can apply that, apply this, come into this shape, apply that. And very easily you can adopt that. So apply as border. You can adopt those colors. So if you ever come back in here and change this by clicking edit, it's going to change everywhere else. Now this is about all you need for your buttons library. And you can reorder things right here. So if I want the button icon primary to be above secondary. And let's have the button primary up here. You can reorder your components here in the assets panel any way that you want. And I actually forgot to save this here. I can save this character style as just button primary. And I can select this one here and save that as button secondary. And then come over into here and adopt that same button primary and button secondary. So if I ever wanna change that, I can change that just here and it'll apply everywhere else. So that's our buttons library. Now I wanna show you how powerful this is with other documents. I'm just gonna save this document to the cloud and I'm gonna call this buttons library. And we'll go ahead and save this. And now I'm just gonna open up a completely new project from scratch. Let's do an iPad app. So let's go ahead and link these here. We can click on link assets and we have this buttons library right here. And now it's bringing in all the components that we created, the colors, the character styles. And we can very quickly come in here and just drag some of these icons and these different shapes into our project. And you can see that there's a little green circle here that shows that this is a linked asset. And so we can make changes to this and we can move things around here. But if we ever want to access this master component and we don't know where it is, what document it lives in, that's okay. We can right click in here and say edit master and source document. So it's going to jump to that document here, show us exactly where that is. So if we want, we can come over here and change this text to blue. And let's just select this background and make this blue as well. And now when we save this, we can jump back into this document that we created. And this icon turns blue telling us, hey, something was changed. You don't have to adopt it if you don't want. But over here, we can see that same link and we can hover over it to see that change. So we can toggle back and forth. And if we like that change, we can either click on this little button here or update all. So we just updated that in the master source document very easily. And we still have our overrides retained here. Now, one of the last things I wanna show you are the nested component overrides. As you're probably aware, we actually created a nested component inside of this button here. This is a component in and of itself, so I can change that out and it'll swap that everywhere. 
So if I change that from a cloud, let's say to something else, you'll see that applied everywhere else, but we can switch that just for this instance. So we have this component here that's a child instance. And let's say that we want this to say info and we want this to be an info icon. So we can select on this layer and come over here into icon info and we can drag it on top of here. And as soon as we let go, that's replaced. We want to just make the fill white now. And now we have a nice info button. And let's just copy this over here. And if I want to change this from a primary icon button to a secondary icon button, I can just drag this on top of here and we see that that's all applied here. And I just have to double click inside of here and just apply this success right there. And we'll call this upload. And very easily we can use these nested components to swap out and create different variations of this master component. So that's a quick tour of the new components and libraries inside of the new Adobe XD. It's really powerful. And again, if you want this document so you can save this, create your own variations of buttons and icons, you can do that. And then you can apply this library throughout many of your projects and reuse these components. Be sure to check out my other video highlighting all the other features in this new Adobe XD. I'm sure you're going to love it. Now, if there's anything I'm not covering here that you'd like to see, be sure to let me know in the comments below.